picture this. Annie has started her cleaning company solo 10 plus years ago and called it Sparkle Clean. Now the company employs close to 50 people and services some of the largest commercial accounts in the area. For the half of the tenure of her ownership of the company, she has built this amazing relationships and one of them is was prominent reputable construction company, a builder in the area, who now finishes a luxury apartment construction in a luxury high-rise building and sends Emmy's team to go and do the final clean. Emmy sends the team back in and knowing that everything is under control, starts the weekend and enjoying it. The moment when the team finishes the cleaning, the lead supervisor for some reason forgets to shut down the water faucet in a drop sink and leaves the place. Nobody discovers what had happened until Monday. And this was the only weekend in that year when the weather temperatures dropped below zero freezing temperatures. So you can imagine the bursted pipes and all the water flowing down, not only ruining that apartment, but also apartments down below. The claims that were put, the relationship that is now hindered, the money that not only she's not collecting for that payment, but also the money for losses that now the builder is seeking to obtain from Amy. An unfortunate part, all these years, Amy did not have the adequate insurance to cover the luxury apartments because Things were sort of moving along their way and she always looked at it as an additional extra income, which is probably not necessary. So let's dive in at the mistakes and things that you should not do, but also familiar as ourselves with this very complex insurance system. A lot of us, when we get started, we have no clue what we're about to get ourselves into because the cleaning has the lowest overhead expense and you literally take what you have and start offering the service and not all, all the insurance you might not need from the get go. So let's start diving in. There are various types of insurances, depending upon the type of entity you have, some of them you might need to omit, not get now, procrastinate and put them off for a later time as your company grows. This is exactly what I had done. However, there's one insurance that I would recommend you do not skip and that'll be a general liability. And this is number one in our list. I'm going to lay them over based on the importance in my opinion, of course, consult with your insurance agent as well. So general liability is there to cover customers, property and facility and belongings and the client assets. This general liability does not cover you. In, in a sense, it doesn't cover your people or your belongings. It covers customers belongings. So it provides the peace of mind for a customer. If you're sole proprietor, then, and you're the solo cleaner who works on a cleaning, then you might not need the next insurance, which, which I'm about to mention. And it is a worker's compensation. Worker's compensation is there to cover your staff, your people while working at the job site should they harm themselves, especially if you do window cleaning, roof pressure washing, etc. This might be more adequate because the risk is higher and therefore your premium from the insurance coverage will be higher. In general, we don't go up more than three steps in uh, my company and therefore our work is compensation is does not cover like high rises, but we don't do them anyways. We bring in the qualified vendors with adequate insurance for that. So workers' compensation is number two in this list and it's cover your people should they hurt themselves during the work. The next one would be the commercial auto liability and commercial auto liability might be substituted depending upon who you're working for. If you're working for a smaller customer, in a sense, smaller like a residential client, a smaller office building, they might not even require it because they know that the vehicles by law must be insured to get from A to B. Larger companies, larger construction firms, especially in property management companies, they would want to see the auto liability in it. Commercial auto liability covers your vehicles should something happen and or if you were to accidentally bump into customers' vehicles and that is what it covers. The next would be the employee dishonesty bond, which is also fidelity bond. So if have you seen these commercials where people say we're licensed, insured, and bonded? So 
If you want to be able to say that, that you're licensed, insured, and bonded, then you need insurance. So there are two types of insurances, and I'm going to touch base about the next insurance in a little bit because I don't think it's as important as this one, which is the employee dishonesty bond, also known as fidelity bond. This is protects your customer if should you have a dishonest, fraudulent, or theft done by your employees. And it gives a peace of mind to a customer, but also another marketing arsenal. Another marketing tool for your arsenal so you can say, I'm now licensed, insured, and bonded. Licensing is the whole separate video. And then the insurance. As long as you have general liability, you can say insured. But in a sense, people expect you to have workers' compensation, general liability, and auto insurance. So this the employee dishonesty bond comes when you start saying and advertising that you are now also bonded. So next comes is inlet marine insurance and it depends on your practices. So if you're a commercial company such as us and then you rent heavy equipment for a larger job such as scissor lift, lock behind scrubbers, hot water, big pressure washers and etc., then you need insurance to cover that while you're transporting and then while you're utilizing that specialty equipment. And that is inland marine insurance. If you do not have this insurance, for example, when I started off offering warehouse cleaning jobs and we needed those scrubber equipment like larger walk behinds and or scissor lift or articulating boom lift, then the renter who I was renting from, they would charge me additional for this. So as you notice that you have more job, then it kind of makes sense to add that insurance to your policy. This way, next time you rent a heavy equipment, the person who's who you're renting it from will not charge you for that expense so it saves you in a long run assuming you've got enough jobs in a pipeline that requires specialty equipment so the next would be the commercial umbrella that i put in a must-haves as your company grows a commercial umbrella is there to cover you for any other instances when the other policies don't cover so it just goes on top normally it's a million two or three million dollars per aggregate per occurrence sorry sorry there's different terminology called per occurrence so your policy could be three million in aggregate which is combined and then per occurrence it could be a million dollars which means each occurrence it won't pay over a million dollars but then your umbrella only kicks in when let's say you had a general liability claim like we had in amy's case and then general liability didn't cover it all because it just got exhausted because the damage was so big then your umbrella would come in and kick in and then would cover for the remainder so there are different terminologies and then we're going to look into them a little longer at the end of this video when we go and learn more about the certificate how to read and what to pay attention to so these are a must as you grow the secondary would be optional insurances or good to have insurances and the reason is yes it's really cool to have all insurance but let's be realistic insurance costs money and it's not really cheap and we're here to make profit so some of the insurances you have to wait in and out if you want some or not for example lost key insurance do you really need this yes let's say if you're in a school and you lose the key then the school might come and charge you because your janitor lost the key and they had a master key to rekey all the doors then this will get super expensive for you however on the flip side, with technology, now people are getting key keyless pads, keyless locks. So you kind of have to know your customer and then based on that, acquire the insurance if you need one. So lost key insurance would be one of them, which is pretty cool to have, relatively inexpensive. But again, wait out your customers. So if you go and doing a residential and your customers are always there, you literally don't need the key insurance because you have no keys in your possession. Next one would be the janitorial bond, which is also known as a surety bond. And that is to protect your customers. Some, uh, some of the larger bids, procurement opportunities, or government jobs will require you to have a surety bond. The reason for surety bond is it doesn't cover you. It covers your customer in case, you, in case should you default on your obligations. Let's say you got a procurement for a state office to clean them for three years and then the fixed monthly rate that you guys agreed upon so state may require a surety bond because hey state is giving a chance to you 
But what happens if you mismanage your cash, mismanage your books and or make other mistakes and you go out of the business, but then the state building cannot be not maintained. In that case, the insurance pays off. So surety bond gives surety to your customer. So it's there to protect them. If it's required, they'd normally get it. The next one would be commercial property insurance in case of unforeseen circumstances such as fire damage, God's act and etc. Whatever property you have. For example, once I had I had a fire, the neighbor's house caught fire and then it jumped over to my property and melted part of my shed and part of my garage that had equipment in it. In this case, it was personal, but the reason I'm saying is it, in a commercial world, this would have covered as well. So the, the fire jumped, the source of the fire was not determined or actually the source was determined, but the blame wasn't put on the, on my neighbor's property. And instead my own insurance kicked in and reimbursed me for the shed cost to repair the siding and the content of the shed that got melted because of the fire. So if you are adjacent, if you have adjacent properties where you actually store equipment, heavier equipment, and one of the, let's say pizza places at the corner catch fire and the whole strip now is burned down, then this is when it comes and repays for actual property for you. There's another business insurance that I put right under the commercial property insurance, and that would be business interruption insurance. It is very close to commercial property insurance in regards to the cases, the causes, what it would cover, the, the bigger difference is you will compensate your company for a possible loss of income based on those occurrences that are covered. So now if the commercial property insurance covers your belongings here, you might put a claim for a loss of income. So that's like win-win from that. You get your property back and you get paid for the money that you potentially lost because of whatever had happened and a bad event took place. Employment practices liability insurance is EPLI. This is to protect you against wrongful discrimination, harassment, practices that possibly may come out in your business. But and, and cleaning is very labor heavy, right? We depend in our businesses for labors to do the work. And knowingly or not, if you were to make a mistake and you have a claim against you, then this is when the insurance kicks in. This is more relevant when you have employees. If you're a sole proprietor and you're happy cleaning other people's houses, then most of this or half of this insurance, you really won't even need it. So the last insurance on this list, before we go into this, I'd like to put a crime insurance, and this is there to protect against losses resulting from employee theft, forgery, and or fraud. So should your employees make a fraud, theft, or forgery, this is when the crime insurance comes in to play. There's also one insurance that I forgot to mention, and it is a cyber liability insurance. This terminology is becoming bigger and bigger as we move in more into a connected digital world. And this insurance protects against hacks, breaches, and potential liabilities caused with this. When you have the cyber insurance, then the insurance company will require you to have, to do your part of due diligence. For example, make sure you have two factor authentications turned on and don't browse on the computers you don't know, don't go to the access. In a sense, most of this should be a healthy practice for you. Anyways, you should be practicing these safeguarding the information because the cost could be costly. Imagine they log into your bank account. Imagine they log into your QuickBooks. Imagine they log into your uh, CRM and steal the database of your customers and the harm they can do or block you out of your website. So that is when it comes into play, but two-factor authentication, uh, safely browsing from the networks you know, using the equipment that you know, should be a normal practice for you anyways. Okay, so let's now look into this. And before you do this, I would like to ask you to do me a favor and hit that like button. We are on our way to a thousand subscribers and it really helped me out if we can get there. And I know with your help we can do this. Just take a moment, like that video and hit subscribe. And I know many that watch, not many subscribe, but I promise my promise to you is to continue delivering higher quality 
content for your trust. So now that we're done with it, thank you for taking care of it for me. So let's dive into this. In some cases, you will notice that people will not even, like especially companies, will refuse to pay you unless you have the insurance and in insurance coverage. Okay, so check this out. Of course, I closed off some of the areas over here. So what this means is, this is the producer information. So this will be your insurance agent or a carrier. So let's say if you buy directly from a carrier, then it'll be them. If not, it will be the agent's information. So which means they can reach out to your agents directly and confirm that the insurance is active. Because in some cases, unfortunately, some people force the certificates of insurance and this is the way to verify. This is the insured. So in a Amy's case, Spark Cleaning would be here and their address would have gone down below. And then insurer right here would be the companies that are insuring. So it doesn't have to be one company. It doesn't need to be State Farm, Selective, or Farmers, or any other insurance just for the whole package. Your insurance agent actually can shop for you from different carriers and get you the best results if they're really good. And and in, in most cases though, if you go to one carrier, they will beat the rates because they want the whole business. So insurer A, B, C information would be placed right over here. And as you can see, commercial general liability. So you've got the policy number here and the expiration. And here's what I was talking about. Each occurrence is a million dollars in here. And then the general aggregate is two million. So this policy will never pay off more than $2 million combined throughout one year and then more than $1 million for each occurrence. Auto liability information comes right in here, same format. And then you've got the workers' compensation that comes right in here. If you have a surety bond, it can go in here. If you have inland marine, it can go in here. And then right over here, we've got some of the companies will ask you most of them actually will ask you to be um to, to be added as a certificate holder right here so a company name and then the billing address would be at the bottom and on top in the description field they'll ask you to put a verbiage such as in this case we've got affiliates and additionally insured on a primary and non-contributor basis or right here what says what this says is whatever the claim comes to me after the claim the the person who performed the service their claim is exhausted so that's an important area for you to know and if your so if your insurance company charges you and i've seen this over and over and i just can't wrap my head around how like some insurance companies could be vicious which is not the case because whatever you go to a legit company adding certificate holders and then adding as many people in the description should be included. They might charge you extra a little bit for it, and that's okay, because overall, you can't be paying $20, $50 just to add one person each time the certificate of insurance is requested from you. So be mindful who you shop with for your insurance and who's your insurance agent. In general, it's a really cool practice to have a very good, healthy working relationship with your agent because they are there to protect you. And instead of, in my opinion, going directly to one carrier, which is, and the, and the carriers are usually the company that's actually insuring you, I have found that working with a local agent is better because they shop out for other carriers and get you the best results for you. Now go ahead and watch this video next and keep on crushing your business and stay safe and share your success stories. Bye.